Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. You know our next guest is Abby from the Netflix original Santa Clarita Diet. You can catch them this December in the Jay Roach film Bombshell. And starting tomorrow, they'll be starring alongside an awesome ensemble cast in the super cozy holiday rom-com Let It Snow, also on Netflix. Uh, make some noise. The great Liv Houston is here. How about that? Make some noise for Liv. Let's go. They're doing it. Are you doing it? Making some noise out there. Uh, we'll get started in just a second, but first, I believe we have a trailer for the film, so let's go ahead, run that clip. This place is beautiful. It's like the perfect holiday card. Snow hides a lot. It's like the space of weather. You can do a lot worse in this place, trust me. Tell her that you like her. You know, I've noticed since I was five years old, it's not that easy. You just have to tell her you want the same relationship plus boning. Tobin! Yeah. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm up good. See you downstairs when you found a bra. Christmas Eve bash. Come one, come all. Boom. He's gonna break up with me. He would have to be the dumbest human being on earth to do that. Like, dumber than the people who blow on ice cream before they eat now it. That girl and I have a thing. Have you ever been with someone and you stay up until like 4 a.m. just talking about everything and you're just like, I can't believe I get to exist at the same time as you? No, but, like, I'm really happy for you. I realize that life is just a bunch of stuff you can't control. But is that a bad thing? Yeah. Anything can happen. Good, bad, anything. <laughs> She's hooking up with them. No, they're not hooking up. Yet. Press the break. I mean, I am pressing the break. Stop. Dude, I think your nipple's bleeding. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Liv Houston right here. Let's do it up. Let's go. Come on. Uh, congratulations. I was saying it backstage. I'll say it again. Uh, this film, super cozy. It's Thank fantastic. You. <laughs> yeah. I love, that's what we want. We yeah, want it to be good. Exa- it just makes you feel warm watching. It. It's, a, it's a fantastic film. It's so much fun. It uh, looks like you guys had a ton of fun uh, making it. I'm excited to talk to you all about it. We'll get into it. I want to talk about everything. But first, how are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm good. I'm very very happy to be here. Yeah, I'm doing great. It's great to have you. I saw. Uh, I think this. You, you just posted this on Insta. The big old trailer playing in Times Square. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's that's the first time that's happened to me. So I, I yeah. trying not to think about it too hard because otherwise I will freak out. <laughs> But it's lovely. It's good. I'm excited to, to talk about because I feel like you in particular have been in a lot of scenarios where rightfully so you could freak out. You've been surrounded <laughs> by some amazing people. You've had a chance to do some amazing things. We're going to get to all of that. Uh, I saw recently uh, you just did the premiere for this. It was this week, right? Yeah, yeah, in L.A. That must have been so awesome. When did you guys wrap this up? When did this we, finish? We shot this in Toronto over February and March. Okay. So was year. it nice like getting everybody back together and hanging oh, out again? Oh, it was beautiful. And because it's such a big cast and like we're all off doing our own things now, it was the first time. Like some of us had seen each other, but it was the first time we'd all been in the same room again. So that was really lovely. That's really awesome to hear. What was it like? Um, especially was that your first time seeing the film? Yeah, your net. Uh, you actually, when they were f- finishing it, Netflix hosted a couple of screenings for us to come and see it in progress, and that was really nice. I'm curious about that because I, I feel like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but like if it wasn't done in the Waffle House, you probably didn't see it because it wasn't part of your schedule. So it's like, really funny that you bring that up because um, how it would work filming it is there'd be like a, a few days of like kids and Mitchell and Matthew and then like a few days of Shamik and Bella and a few days of me and Odea and so like a week would pass and then it'd be a day with all of us and we'd be like what happens in your bit again like what oh yeah and then you and then he comes to your house like we kept forgetting what happens to each other in the film so it was like a recap every so often so it must have been cool to see it for the first time like Mm -hmm. watch it all play back and be like that's the movie we made yeah (laughs) that's exactly how it felt that's pretty amazing. Uh, how did you uh, even come to be involved with this? Were you familiar with the stories uh, in the book before? or I wasn't. I was familiar with the work of the authors, but this is one I hadn't come across before. Um, 
I auditioned for it uh, when the script came around. I thought it was like really funny and sweet. I liked it. I went in, and they said, "Yeah, yeah, you'll do. Come on." <laughs> so it worked. Ice. You'll do. Yeah. You will suffice. You seem all right. Come this way. Do you have any concept of the people you'd get to work with? Did, w was Anna already a part of it at that time? Did you know anything like that? Or Anna and I realized once we were on set that we were in the audition room together. No like, I, I went in right before she did. And, and then we met on set later. And it was like, I remember you. Hi, what's up? <laughs> You'll do. Yeah, we'll both do. Isn't that nice? What was it like? You know, you talk about all the different uh, party, uh, different like sections. Everybody's filming their own bits. But what did you guys historically tons of downtime on any set? What yeah. did you guys do in the in the moments? You're out in Toronto, a bunch of people relatively the same age. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, right? So, oh, yeah. how did you guys kill the time in between? What were you doing? Uh, we were all staying in the same hotel building. No. Yes. That's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. That's it was great really mess, good. But like, I'm. I was. I was saying earlier today that like I didn't go to university, but like this is kind of like wh I, what I imagine bits of it are like. It's like we're all staying in the same building, we're here doing the same thing. You're free today and I'm free today. Should we go eat? Yeah. Should we go cause some trouble? What are we doing? Just out. Whose dorm are we hanging out in? Right. Uh, have you been to Toronto before? Was it no. I had spent a lot of time in Vancouver, but it was my first okay. time on the East Coast. Just yeah. kind of exploring, going around. It was beautiful. Figuring it out. Amazing food there. Yeah. I can't, I can't even believe it. Uh, talk about a little bit, uh, just briefly, the, the party scene, uh, yeah. that this film, it, uh, we have all these stories and all kind of coalesce as a crescendo of this beautiful moment. We see a little bit of it in the trailer there. Was that like a TV party, like no music, everybody pretend to dance? Or did you guys do like a real party? How did it work? Let me tell you about Luke Snellen, the director of our film. He, he has like a very musical sensibility about the way he works. Like when the camera's not rolling in between takes or setups, he always has music playing. Like we call him DJ Snellen. Yeah, and he had bits of the soundtrack planned out before the film was finished, and like he, like he's a musical dude. So whenever we were dancing, even if it wasn't the music he planned to use, he would have music playing for us to dance to. And then during that final party scene, we filmed it all day, over a day, really? and then the last take of the last shot, Luke just didn't call cut at all. And, and so, the entire cast is in this diner with like a room full of extras, yeah. and we just lose it. We just da we just keep dance. We at, this, at a certain point we turn to each other and we're like, okay, so this is a real party now. Okay, let's go. He, he so we're like else, yeah. we're like in character improvising, but like at a rager that's turned into a real thing. And then eventually the crew started joining in, and then we finally ended the shot. You turn around, you're like nobody's behind the cameras. Yeah, like, like what is happening so in here? We just chaos. This is I mean, we will keep going, but like, oh my, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> it was, but that was an all-day shoot, huh? That was mm -hmm. that was a long one. Yeah, it was. Does it, it was feel? Fun, yeah, I was gonna say when you're doing that, that doesn't feel like like a yeah, long day. Yeah, it's like, right? oh, what a terrible job we have. <laughs> like, you know, it's <laughs> very lovely. Dory uh, makes some uh, some pretty awesome bold moves in in the movie, like the the butter beer waffle thing. At one point, I oh. think is a very sweet gesture. Were you ever that type of person to make the the initial contact or to make the first move or do a bold gesture like that? No, in real life, especially romantically, I'm pretty shy. Like I'm pretty reserved. I, I like I I require pursuit. I'm less of a pursuer, like which is what I like about Dory is that she's she has like such a sureness of herself and. Yeah. Such initiative. I think she's cool. That's got to be an exciting thing to get to play. Then it kind of yeah. stuff. Dory feels like somebody that it, it almost reads like it's it's her, her first time doing that in a way because she like has to psych herself up to do it. Yeah, and it you know we time. see her at the beginning and she's like, oh, I've been trying to text this girl for weeks, and it's yeah. like, oh, honey, <laughs> like, <laughs> of course, of course yeah. you have. It's hard. Yeah, exactly. Um, I saw. Uh, I think it was like. I want to say a year ago, an article that you had talked about that you uh, kind of dream of one day being able to play uh, a non-binary uh, character on screen. Yeah. And uh, I know that we referred to Dory as her, so I know Dory's not non-binary. Yeah. Um, but uh, we do get to see this amazing queer love story represented in a holiday rom-com. So I feel like as an actor, that had to be a pretty exciting thing to, yeah. to find and come upon. Yeah, that's part yeah. of what attracted me to the project in the first place, I think, was like not only um, getting to play a gay character, but getting to play a gay character in like such a cultural staple as like the holiday romantic comedy. And you know, I just thought that the script treated her with such kindness and respect and Anna's character as well. And I loved that. And I, you know, it just made me think how much I would have enjoyed seeing a film like this when I was in high school, you know? So um, I hope the teens like it. <laughs> 
Well, I, I bring it up because I was just talking to, uh, I had Bridget Lundy Payne here. Uh, Bridget! Like, yeah, and you, you guys are great friends, yeah. right? Uh, and I was talking to them about uh, their character on Atypical mm -hmm. and sort of a similar conversation of how, uh, you know, that character's evolution and story and how it's being handled in that show and, and how it's just it's just normal, it's just part of the show. And then same thing here, you're watching it. And I see both of these things back to back and I'm like, oh, maybe the needle is moving in the right direction. Yeah. And it, and it, I begs the question of like, are you finding more projects where queer love stories or just part of the narrative, not a gimmick, but just part of the story. You know, I am. I yeah. am noticing it more and more, and it's it's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Is that something? Because um, as a journalist and as a media person, like we all talk about it and we highlight it and we call attention to it. Mm. But like when you watch a movie, it just feels like a movie. It's yeah. just like a fun movie, just a rom com movie. When you guys were on set, was everybody like, "Wow, we're really diverse"? Like, no, right? Like, no. what what's the vibe on set? When not at all. We were just like we were just busy enjoying ourselves, I think, and like learning our lines. <laughs> <laughs> making, making sure we knew what we were doing. I think it was Jacob who was saying um, earlier this weekend when we were doing press in Los Angeles that, like, th this movie just looks like the real world. Yeah. You know, this level of diversity is is actually very normal and very regular, and the fact that we're seeing it more, like, should feel normal. And, you know, it's, it's the fact that it, it looks the way the world does that is ex exciting and different, but hopefully we get to a point where we can realize that actually it's just matching the outside and that's what it should look like. Exactly. What kind of, um, you know, after you guys got over the fact that you both will do, what kind of conversations <laughs> did you and Anna have to sort of uh, establish like your chemistry and, and how that relationship would look on screen? Um, it was very, very normal actory stuff, which is like, you know, well, our, our characters are supposed to feel a bit awkward around each other at this point, so it's like, we'll, sort of talk about what that means and where we're at and like what level of angry or confused we need to be in order to like sell this love story and like what emotional beats we need to hit. And then also um, right before our kiss scene, both of us were like running around madly trying to find mints, trying to like help each other find gum. So like there was a lot of uh, support in that regard for each other. You would assume on a rom-com set, there'd be a lot of gum and mints around. Yeah, it was a very 11th hour concern where suddenly both of us were like, Shh, oh my God, no, <laughs> like we have to touch mouths. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me go and find a Tic Tac. But we, d we did, so it's okay. Okay, nice. It's like Got consummate it. professionals. Yeah, well it reads as people with mints when you watch the movie. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's exactly what we, want, what we wanted to sell. For. Yes, what you want to sell. It's very important. The idea that, uh, yes, we're in love and all that, but uh, our, our breath, breath, very fresh. We want you to know that these characters are considerate of each other's needs and that they do eat mints before they make out because that's just the thing to do if you know what's happening. <laughs> I guess when the concern, there's, I love the concern is there's a lot of music playing. We keep the vibe hot. Yeah. But yeah. mints, you're on your own. Yeah, no. It's, <laughs> you know, it's maybe the, maybe Luke was trying to amp us up. Like, yeah, get nervous. Yeah, exactly. It was part of it. It was very method in a way. It wants you to be in that moment. He's a genius. Yeah. Oh, well, it made a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> how did you, how do you know Bridget? How, how are you guys best buds? Because we, we actually met at a Marie Claire party, like, how long ago now? Over, over a year ago now. And then, uh, I was in New York for something else, and we ran into each other again. And it was like, hi, I remember you. We made friends at that event. We stayed in touch. Anytime Bridget was in LA or I was in New York, we would catch up. And then one day, Bridget calls me on the phone, and um, I've just been cast in Bombshell, but like, I'm, it's like, oh, Bridget's calling me, that's amazing. And Bridget's like, hey, I'm looking at your photograph on a wall, and I'm in an office in LA, and I think we're about to shoot a movie together. It's so cool. And then we find out, not only are we about to shoot a movie together, but all of our scenes are together, and no way, really? yeah, and like our, our characters have are like have a partnership throughout the whole movie. So that, that was amazing. That, that never happened. It was so good. What a like a wonderful little gift from the universe. Yeah, I know it was awesome. It also, I got to imagine having a friend there in that context, because like you look at all of the people in that movie and like all the amazing, incredible talent. Like, forget starstruck. Like, does it oh elevate God. your performance in a way? Do you have to get out of your own head? Is it, is it nice having a friend there to kind of? take a moment and reflect on this is insane? No, it was amazing because yeah. we could at any stage turn to each other and go, so this is like also happening to you, right? right? Exactly. Like you can, no you can, you can see that. Okay, great, just checking. Yeah. We are hit, cool. <laughs> cool, 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 great. What are we, do? it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was a big relief. Did, um, did you try in any way whatsoever to, to find a moment to absorb some kind of wisdom or, or sage advice from any one of the amazing people on this project? Or is it sort of like a standoff, just observe kind no, of thing? No, constantly, you're constantly learning all the time. Like whether, whether you go out of your way to like ask about things or whether it is just watching the way that people work, it's like, I feel like we were both just such sponges in that environment. 
um, just like watching Jay direct and like engaging with him and with Charles the writer and like with Charlize and watching everybody do their work. It was just mind blowing. Have you seen the film yet? Yeah, I have. Oh, wow. It's, it's good. Okay. <laughs> it's very good. I do too. You get those people in a room, they got to put out something nice. Yeah, I'm really excited for people to see it. That's wild. What was that? And did you, it was like a big screening, everybody big... Because it hasn't premiered. Does it no, premiere it hasn't, right but they were, they've been doing um, like screenings and conversations with the three leads afterwards in different cities, and uh, I got to go to the LA one recently. Well, I mean, talk about what was that experience like for the first time, seeing that writ large? I, we, I'm sharing the screen with Charlie It was with amazing. Charlize Theron. And yeah, no, I... Kenan. I It just... I don't, I don't know. Does it, is it not feel real yet? Does it feel real? Is it, is it still? What is it? I'm not sure. I think yeah. I'm just bemused by the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that happened. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. That's one of those things that I think of, like, you see you, that, you see the, the billboard in Times Square. It's just been a, it's been a good year. You're yeah. having a great run. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it it's has. One way to classify it. Yeah. It has been a really good year. I'm, I'm, I don't take it for granted. I feel very lucky. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is on Netflix tomorrow. Yeah. The film Bombshell, that's in December. Yes. I know you're focusing on a lot of acting, got a lot of stuff going on. Have you been writing at all lately? Have you been doing anything? No, I've been really slack the last few years. Yeah? I, I feel like my life got very different very quickly, and um, I'm like having to sort of consciously figure out how to make writing part of my life again. But I would like to in the yeah. future. I mean, you've been busy. That, thank you. That's very kind. You didn't just stop writing. <laughs> no, that's true. I mean, I think I'm. I think I'm pretty hard on myself too with stuff yeah. like that. Like if I sit still for thirty seconds, I'm like, oh god, what's yeah. happening? Yeah. No, I get that vibe. Do you um uh ever like find a moment where you well while you're acting while you're doing something you think oh this will be great when I do finally get back to writing that I've had this experience this will really inform something I want to work on later. Yeah, sometimes yeah. yeah, I do think the two skills inform each other. Like you know what I what I know about acting is useful if I'm writing and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, it's all I a feedback loop. Yeah, I saw uh, other cool thing you did. I think it was like over the summer. It was a little while ago, but with Bridget, you did a shoot for Wave. Yeah, I was, talking, I was talking to them about Wave, and I thought it was super bad. You did the dad series. That was fun. That was so fun. How did what what, what happened there? Did you reach out to Bridget? Bridget reached out Bridget to you. Bridget reached out to me for sure. Uh, and I said yes immediately. And then we went and got a bunch of costumes at a Goodwill and wrote down what Goodwill kinds way. of dads we wanted to emulate. Got in touch with um, an old Hollywood uh, hair artist who had a bunch of beards he was willing to let us borrow. So we borrowed them and gave them back and um, got a bunch of friends together to do a shoot in what Bridget's you, backyard. What did the list of dads look like? Um, there was a couple of dads. There was barbecue dad, business dad, sporty dad, um, uh, like, like a messy dad, like, messy like a slouchy dad. Got it. Yeah. Um, Shy Dad, okay. one of my favorites. I was gonna say, do you have a favorite dad? Yeah, Shy Dad was one of my favorites. What's I just, the hallmark just of a to Shy Dad? What's oh, a Shy Dad look like, like? He's just at a party and he's in the corner and doesn't know where to put his hands. <laughs> like, he, like he doesn't want to reach for the bowl of mixed nuts in case someone sees him and he gets in trouble for doing nothing. Well, he doesn't know how to exist in his body, you know? You reach thing. out to your Hollywood hair guy and you say, I need Shy Dad hair. What does that look like? What does Shy Dad facial hair look like? It's like a mustache that's like just a little bit wrong for his face shape like it goes over his mouth just a little bit too much like he so like people have trouble hearing him talk you know it's like oh we just come out it's safe <laughs> we want we want to get to know you so right we named him his name was neil i believe we we're like neil it's fine we all felt very you know tenderly towards neil i i only know a couple of neils and they're all very sweet yeah i yeah. feel like you know neil is a sweet name i think so as well uh, well, this is a really sweet movie. And Thank you've you. Done, yeah, congratulations. Honestly, you're all wonderful in it. And how was that for a segue, by the way? That was yeah, that, I mean, I, was, I wasn't going to bring it up, but wow. I was very yeah. impressed. I was very proud. I didn't want to lose the moment. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's... <laughs> <laughs> This is on Netflix tomorrow. Yes. Everyone everywhere can and should watch it. Uh, and again, keep an eye on December for Bombshell. And check out Wave and look at the dad shoot because it's pretty incredible. Anything else I should plug before we go to audience questions? Ah, uh, no. I think you absolutely nailed it. Thank you. It's not like it's my job or anything. You know? Yeah, you're yeah. so good at it. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. Oh, uh, yeah. No, of course. You got to. Respect for you. Uh, <laughs> you're awesome. Please don't leave. Let's get some audience <laughs> questions real quick. We got a couple in the room. First one right here. Go for it. Hi. Hi. Um, so you were talking about how Let It Snow is like a very musical type of driven um, movie. Can you give Dory a theme song and can you give yourself a theme song? Love it. Oh, boy. Um, you know, I bet I can. What's what's Dory's theme song? It's like. Um, it's like too like too much by Carly Rae Jepsen, I think. 
And she's like, you know, expressive with her affection, but not sure if she's going to get it back in the way she deserves. Um, and for me, um, oh my God. I don't know. <laughs> Can I just like pick something by Philip Glass that's just like bombastic and a little alienating? <laughs> Love it. That plays whenever I come into a room. I think that's great. Cool, love that. For the record, I thought you were about to make up and sing a song, is what I thought was going to happen. And then you were choosing existing compositions. Wise move. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm no Wayne Brady. I don't know how I got, like, well, I it just said I got really <laughs> What magic is about to unfold? Oh. No, but this was great, too. Great question. Thank you for that. Thanks. Uh, okay, can I get one more? I'd love one more. Let's get one more question. Come Hi on there. Down. Hey. hey. So after working with such an amazing ensemble ensemble for uh, Bombshell, what other actors or actresses would you like to work with in the future? I'm always a bit shy about um, admitting stuff like that because it feels a bit like admitting that you have a crush on somebody. <laughs> like it's not exactly the same, but it's like, oh, it'd just be nice if we were in the same room. Like it's just, I don't know, I get embarrassed. Um, and then I think I'm worried about jinxing myself. So, so I think I'm going to keep them a secret. But I do have some squirreled away in here. Thank you so much. They're not mine. I have to give them back. But I love them, too. Is there a, uh, a barefoot person walking around backstage right now waiting for <laughs> Yes, I stole these. <laughs> she said the trailer's running. You're like, give me those. I'm like, no, I I'm, must. I'm running away with it. Well, I don't know how well I can run in these, but I'll try. I believe in you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, it was a blast having you here, sincerely. Thank so you. much fun. My and uh, again, love the sweater. Fantastic Thank you. dinosaur sweater. Wonderful. Well done. Uh, November 8th, Let It Snow is on Netflix. Bombshells out later this year in December. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're crazy if you don't make a wild amount of noise because that's Liv Houston right there. Go ahead. Come on, do it up. Let's go. Thank you.